The students and teachers you're going to meet today made incredible achievements in the face of unbelievable circumstances. I'm Alyssa Marino. Welcome to the Humankind Connection. Omar couldn't believe the screen when he checked his bar exam results, but we're pretty sure his mom had the best reaction of all time. I talked to Omar and his mom about his amazing accomplishment, but also the incredible strength it took to get there. April's son just accomplished a dream he's had since the fifth grade. He passed the California bar exam. Congratulations to you, Omar. Thank what you. an accomplishment. Um, it's not easy to do what you did. So um, I guess in your own words, like, how does it feel? How are you feeling right now? You know, it's, it's really crazy uh, for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, to pass the California bar exam is just a relief, you know, to, to have to wait so long to find out results then to have that moment uh, behind me, it's, it's incredible. Um, then to start work a few days later is, is even crazier. So, you know, everything really is, is official. I'm actually an attorney now, uh, so it's, it's unbelievable. He's the first man in his family to go to college. Only 4% of attorneys in California are black and, and less than that black males. And so to be able to join that is, is an amazing feeling. We've had some highs, we've had some lows throughout that journey. And just to see him persevere and be able to do this and with his hard work and discipline and God's grace to just see it come full circle. That whole day I was nervous. Um, I'm not going to lie and say I was super composed and confident. I was crapping in my pants. <laughs> um, and not because I felt like I failed or anything, but it's the California bar exams. So you just never know. You know, it has the lowest pass rate of any bar exam, so you, it could go any way. When the results came in, he couldn't believe the words on the screen. And then it hit, and I'm like, oh my God, I passed the California <laughs> bar exam. Um, so I, I, again, I was relieved first and foremost, but I was, I was grateful. Um, and I know, you know, her reaction was very just loud and over the top and she was praising God, but I was doing that too, just, you know, silently. Um, but that's that's always been the case with us. You know, I'm, I'm a lot more uh, to myself, more poised, composed, um, and she's a lot more just- Crazy you know, for Jesus, over, no. over, over the top, right? <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun talking to you guys, and I just think this is the most beautiful story. And I hope you don't kill me, April, but I might have to put that part you just said in this piece. <laughs> Crazy for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah! 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus. Omar can't help but think what his stepdad LaShawn would say if he were here now. LaShawn passed away suddenly in a car accident weeks before Omar started law school. And in very few words, he would just say, you made it, oh, you made it. Uh, <laughs> with the biggest smile and, and warmest embrace possible. It's, it's funny because he said the same thing when I graduated college and, and I have a video of that moment. And I always return to it just for just, you know, a, a, a reminder of um, how, proud. how proud he is. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna get back. I gotta give him a hug. You gotta give me a hug. Oh, no, no, I, put, I got it on the ground. <laughs> you made it, oh. You made it. Ain't, ain't nobody taking it away from you. For April, losing her husband was debilitating, but she pushed on for her sons. I knew for me it was imperative that I be the pillar for my family, something my husband had always been. Um, and I needed them to see what being gentle and kind to themselves looked like 
but also being strong and finishing what you started. Omar has felt his presence every step of the way. All I knew was that if he was still here, he would want me to finish and he would not want me to be derailed by the tragedy, which I easily could have. It's knowing he was still with me and that God was with me, I, I think that was really all the strength that I needed. Prior to the bar exam, I was just like, Lord, I need just some kind of sign that, you know, he's with me. Like, whatever it is, I just want to know going into that test that I'm not alone and, and he's there. And it was really crunch time up until the exact moment I was getting in my car, driving over to where I was gonna take the test. And when I parked, um, I looked at my mileage on my car, this pedometer, <laughs> and it said 7777, which was his lucky number. Um, and <laughs> and it's, it's just crazy because for that to happen right in that moment, um, where it really was felt the most, right? I don't know if I would have really appreciated it as much if you know the sign came a month prior to. And Omar says he wants to become a mentor to help people with similar dreams of pursuing law. He also has an article publishing in UCLA's very prestigious law review. He's definitely someone to watch. Our next story is basically the reverse of Omar in April. It's the mom who passed the bar exam and her kids are going crazy. Evelyn came to America from Nigeria to pursue higher education. She took the bar 12 times, but as hard as she studied, her kids always came first. And that's why they're over the moon for her. It was a family FaceTime. Like I was like, we never FaceTime as like a family unless something's like happened. So I'm like, what is this? So I answer and everyone's screaming. Like everyone's screaming, like she passed, she passed. And I sit up in bed and I'm like, what? Like I was just praying about this. It feels like her dream is like fulfilled and like now she can live the life she wanted. And that's all I hope for her, just happiness. Vanna just earned her law degree and her brother graduated medical school. This is the moment they surprised their grandfather at his nursing home. I've literally never seen him here, whether he was in a nursing home or at the hospital right after surgery, like he's always smiling. Seeing my grandpa in tears, I was just like, wow, uh, we made him proud. See, those tears aren't just your average proud grandpa reaction. He's realizing his sacrifices were worth it. He moved to the U.S. from Iran in 1992 to give his family the American dream. And these siblings are the first in their family to graduate college. He hardly speaks English, but then like after that, after we went and saw him, I called him and like all he says is like, I love you. Everyone always says like, you smile so much. I'm like, that's my grandpa. Like, that's from him. It's beautiful to see the next generation pay tribute to their parents and grandparents for the lives they made a path for. And wait until you see how Loida did that for her mom with a surprise three years in the making. Loida is a nervous wreck waiting to reveal the secret she's been keeping. The surprise is for her mom, Mercedes, a woman who spent her life sacrificing for others. Mercedes' lifelong dream growing up in the Dominican Republic was to become a physician. So I think she was 14 or 15 when she finished high school and she was already like um, in college, like starting pre-med when her dad died and she had to leave school to take care of the family. When Mercedes had children of her own, she sacrificed again. Lloyd's parents moved to the U.S. to give her and her brothers more opportunities. So for her, with us, like raising my brother and I, she always preached education, like education, education, education. After working as a nurse for 10 years, Lloyd decided to return to school for her doctorate. I'm gonna go to UCF, I'm gonna get my doctorate, and I'm just gonna fly her in and just surprise her at graduation day as I'm walking across the stage. <laughs> then a roadblock. I was like, this is not happening. I was like, this is not happening. I was like, no one's gonna believe I was in school this whole time. Just as she neared the finish line, the pandemic hit and threatened to steal the moment she'd been dreaming of. I was feeling a little defeated and I'm like, it's not gonna be the same. I just, I wanted to see her expression of just me walking across the stage. Like, I just, 
because that's what I that's kind of like what kept me motivated like just seeing her like coming to graduation and I wanted you know I wanted her to see them hood me then her professor offered small private hooding ceremonies finally Loida was going to pull off her surprise I told her, she's like, did you graduate? I was like, no, I'm graduating right now. She told me it was like she got it herself. She felt like she got it herself, like I completed her dream for her. And it kind of it kind of felt that way. Like I wanted my family to be proud. Um, I wanted her to know that her sacrifice was not in vain. You know, to uproot her family and leave her country to come here. Loida even wanted the name on her diploma to reinforce why she worked so hard. My grandma, my mother, and I we all share the same. Well, it's my middle name. It's my mom's middle name and my grandma's first name. So it's kind of like a, a name that we keep handing down. So I wanted them to see that, that, you know, I came here and, you know, this is what I kind of did for our family. After surprising her mom, Loida traveled to the Dominican Republic to share the joy with her grandma, too. I do like what my grandma said, eh, lo que no hizo el tronco que lo hagan las ramas. What the trunk didn't do, may the branches do. The pandemic made life difficult for everyone, including students and perhaps even more so their teachers. This college class wanted their professor to know how much they appreciated him. Um, okay, for some reason, I see no one's video. I don't know if it's an internet thing. Does anyone have the video on? Huh. There we go. Hi, guys. Oh, wow. Oh, that's like the nicest thing ever. Hold on, hold it, hold it. Wait, 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 hold it. I want to take a picture. Oh, you guys freaking rock. Oh, that's like the nicest thing I've ever seen. Okay, I got a good picture, a couple of them. Thanks, everybody. Is that a thing or was that just for me? I need to know. Just for you. Just for you. All right, you guys actually, you totally made my night. No final, everybody gets 100, we're done. <laughs> So many educators out there are making a difference in children's lives each and every day, and many times they don't get to see the full impact their dedication has made. But one retired teacher is about to see that impact decades later. It's been 40 years since Anna was in Mrs. Harkle Road's classroom, but she never forgot the teacher who made her feel seen. Anna tracked down her first grade teacher to thank her in person. Oh, how are you, how are you all? Oh my goodness uh, gracious. Oh my. I'm not a hugger at all. Like I <laughs> do not hug people, hope people do not hug me. And I couldn't let go. I just, you know, I, I like I just held on to the hug longer than I probably had any like hug in my life. And I just kept saying thank you over and over again. I was just really overwhelmed with just gratitude and, and the ability to say thank you. And I've been wanting to do it for so long. That's what I was supposed to do. Oh, thank you. I just so I just thank you. I can't thank you. When Anna's family moved to the United States, she didn't know any English. As a kindergartner, she struggled to keep up. I don't remember much, but I definitely remember and have memories of just feeling isolated and that I couldn't communicate. I remember there were story times and I, I couldn't, I, I didn't know what was going on, right? So I was just sitting there and didn't know what was going on. I couldn't really communicate well with anybody around me. Everything changed when she got to first grade. Anna's teacher came in early on school days to teach her English. I've always known that there was somebody who got up an hour early every day and, and gave an extra hour of her time every day to come help somebody, you know, who was just one of her many students. I've been lucky to have a lot of important teachers and mentors in my life. I certainly owe a lot of things to a lot of people, but to me that's always stood out as the foundational one that everything else kind of followed from that. 
Anna couldn't remember her teacher's name, but she could never forget the impact she had on her life. Sort of like going from sort of being invisible to being the only person on someone's radar. Not that she wasn't obviously worried about her other students, but that's how it felt like to me. Anna wrote to the Kentucky Department of Education to find the teacher who made her feel seen. Two hours later, they found Mrs. Harkle Road. I was just uh, amazed that she remembered she remembered her uh, first grade teacher. I was so humbled and so thankful that she found that I was a, a, at least a part of her life and the success that she has made of herself. After testing negative for COVID, Anna hopped on a plane to reunite with Mrs. Harkle Road. I wanted to be able to say thank you in person because it was just such a meaningful part of my life and I felt it was something that I, I certainly couldn't email and uh, as you know, a Zoom would have been, I guess, okay, but I just wanted to make the extra effort because she had made such an effort with me. This is the letter that I wrote to Kentucky Department of Education trying to find you. Today, I've gone on to graduate from Transylvania University and Harvard Law School. I'm a co-head of the International Practice Disputes Practice and member of the executive committee of a national law firm based in Washington, D.C. called Williams & Connolly. I spent substantial pro bono work helping refugees gain asylum in the U.S. I mention this only to underscore the point that I often wonder whether this career would have been possible if I had not had someone spend her extra time to help me learn English and ensure that I did not fall behind or through the cracks. I would very much love to say thank you and that my life very likely wouldn't have been possible without you. I have been trying to locate this individual or her family for quite a while, but to no success. This is what I do know. I was in first grade in 1980 to 81, and the teacher was a female. I would appreciate any help you could give in helping me locate this teacher. Thank you for what you do for the Commonwealth, its teachers and its students, Anna. So thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I say over and over and over again, that she has, she's had the will and the desire to make this out of herself, you know, and and I just had a little small stepping stone to ha have her go go as far as she did. Well, I hate to correct uh, my teacher, Mrs. Harker Road, but uh, she, she did not have a small part to play. She had the leading role. Uh, there are a lot of other teachers and mentors in my life who have been incredibly helpful, and I'm thankful to all of them. But none of that would have been possible without Mrs. Harper Road stepping in in the first place. So I'm, of course, very grateful and so incredibly happy that I was able to say it. And we'll probably continue to say it uh, many, many times over. She's going to get sick of it. She's like, enough. Oh. But uh, but uh, for sure, she had a major role in all of it. Well, you know, it just is, uh, I was glad that I could be there for you. And uh, it, it just been uh, so good to, to be able to reunite and be with you and and uh, I appreciate uh, you keep saying thank you to me but I say thank you to you. I had been looking for something to, to oh, thank give you, you uh, when you got here Oh, well, that was nice. and I went to Barnes and Noble so uh, I'll let you open it before I tell any more stories here. Teachers tell stories you know. <laughs> Okay. It, it, it is, of course, a, a children's book. Yes, one girl. Today, more than 130 million girls are denied an education. This story begins with one of these girls. It also begins with one book. The girl reads and the world opens up to her. She discovers other places, other lives, and other possibilities. Thrust into a rich, vibrant world of language and ideas, the girl's imagination takes flight. Brimming with inspiration, the girl must share her story with others and bring other girls from darkness into light. One girl celebrates the dramatic impact of education on a child's life and the power that even the youngest of us have to break this cycle, empower ourselves, and inspire others. When I read the whole thing, yeah. and, and I thought, and I already knew about all, all that you had accomplished and what you had done, that this was the perfect book. I mean, it couldn't be any better, you know, so anyway, now are you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> oh, don't be nervous. I'm just like overcome with emotion. Yeah, well, well. It's just so wonderful to be able to say thank you to Mrs. Harker Road and then to hear from others that uh, hearing about it has caused them to help to reach out and say thank you to their teachers. Is there someone out there that deserves a big thank you from you? 
Whatever it's for, whatever they did for you, we want to help you give gratitude. Send us an email with your story to humankindvideos at gmail.com and we'll do the rest. But let's keep it a surprise. Thanks for watching. Take some time today to be inspired, be human, be kind.